Hi, and welcome to the third and final video in our three-part series on using GFRC to create a permanent decorative structure. Uh, we walked through step one, which was creating the form liner and then the curved GFRC panels. In step two, we talked about the installation of the outdoor living space. And in part three, I'm joined by my good friend, Ricky. Hey, Ernie, how are you? Very good today. And he's gonna actually walk us <coughs> through the countertop process on how he made the edge banding and the decorative uh, concrete countertops. So Ricky, if you could uh, tell us a little bit about um, how everything uh, is gonna go with this particular process. Absolutely, Ernie. Well, there's tons of videos out there on how to make countertops and GFRC mm -hmm. and concrete countertops. What makes this one different is that we use uh, edge molding or edge banding to create a decorative edge around it. Okay, and it looks like you started with this piece of wood trim here to create the mold. Exactly, we went yep. to a local uh, home improvement store. I picked this up. This is the egg and dart style, which we thought fit very well with the art deco design of the entire project. Um, so the first thing we did was we stripped the wood or trimmed it to be one and a half inches, okay. which is the height that we wanted the countertop to be. All right, and then where do you go from there? So once we had it cut to size, what we did was we built, we made two at a time, they were 12 feet long, and we built a box around them to contain the rubber. We made sure that was sealed, that was all the seams had clay in them. Okay. And then we proceeded to seal the wood using sonate wax and then applied a layer of uh, universal mold release. Okay, so that was the same process used in the first video when we were making the form liner. Exactly. Anytime you're using a uh, urethane rubber, you want to make sure that your surfaces are all sealed and released properly. Okay, so which rubber did you use for this project? In this particular project, mm -hmm. we used TAS-16, which is a Shore 80A harness. Okay, now I'm familiar with PMC 780, typically used for concrete stamps. Why did you use this particular uh, product for this particular project? Sure, what makes this different is that it's a 90 minute cure time. Okay. So PMC 780, it's a 48 hour cure time. Um, with this, it's only 90 minutes. You're able to make more of them faster and have them ready for production. Okay, and then ready for production in 90 minutes? Actually, we always recommend to wait, uh, that you wait 24 hours before putting them into production. Okay. However, it doesn't take away from the fact that you can make many molds in the same day. Okay, so great. So I see how all the detail came from the original piece of trim. So pretty much now you're ready to throw it in a box and start making concrete countertops. Right? Sure, you could put it in a box if you okay. wanted to. However, the great thing about this is that the rubber is tough enough that it will hold the shape. So what we did was we actually cut them in a miter saw and then uh, drill through them and screwed them onto the base. So we had a template of the base, mm -hmm. we knew the design that we needed okay. um, and the uh, dimensions that we needed. Then we'd screw them in and match that curve perfectly to the, uh, the base on site. Okay, so the countertops are in fact curved. That's correct. All right, I see. So now we've got everything attached. Now we're ready to cast concrete. Almost, Ernie, not quite, <laughs> not quite. First we needed to put the knockout tin so we made some knockouts to put in where the columns that are going to hold the entire uh, steel pergola would be. Okay. Uh, we knocked those out so we didn't have to cut the concrete later after it was casted. And we also made some metal inlays that were going to go matching the I-beam design of the entire pergola. Okay. And I noticed the colors are the same. So um, similar process in, in casting these countertops? Yeah, pretty much the entire process. Uh, standard uh, mix design was all the same. Mm -hmm. Only difference is we actually polished the countertops and sealed them to give it a nice finished look. Great, and then they were demolded and ready to be installed. Ready to go to the job site. Excellent. Um, overall, it's it's awesome. I mean, I love the fact that you can just create your own um, edge banding from uh, you know a piece of uh, wood here, if you will. What if I didn't like the egg and dart design? And that's a great question, Ernie. Not everybody's going to like this. Um, the good thing about this process or this technique is that you could apply it to any design that you like. So if you like a split rock edge, or if you like a, a rope edge, mm -hmm. or a bull nose. You can use the same technique, different design, and get the, exact, the, the same results. Great. Well, thank you very much, Ricky, for explaining all this to me. Absolutely. Um, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank everyone else for their time for watching these videos, part one, part two, and part three. Uh, we hope these videos were able to help you out. Um, we hope they will be able to help you out on your next project, no matter how big or how small it is. And have a great day. Thank you. See you next time.